Hello and welcome to the Car Carolan channel. Welcome to part two of my series on how Toyota plug-in hybrids work. In the first part of the series, we discussed the basic changes that had to take place between a regular Toyota hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. Starting with, we talked about the changes in the transmission and the power flow and how EV mode can drive the car in dual motor mode. Today, we're going to be focusing on the high voltage battery, the charging, the battery itself, and everything that had to change to accommodate this EV mode that is now extended beyond less than 25 miles an hour and a few yards. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. For my regular viewers, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get to it. So a small overview on these batteries before we get started. As we said in part one, it is an enormous battery for lack of a better term. It's just huge. I mean, when you compare it to a regular hybrid battery, it's like this thing is three, three times the size. And this applies to both the RAV4 Prime and the Prius Prime. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the Prius Prime. We will talk about the RAV4 Prime as we go into this series toward the end. Now, the Prius Prime was more of a... Uh, testing bed. So when they were designing this car, I mean, this is a fourth generation Prius. I know it looks a little bit different, the Prius Prime than the fourth generation Prius, but it is a fourth generation Prius. It was designed not to be a Prime, not to be a plug-in hybrid. It was designed to be a good old trusty hybrid Prius. You can't just change things and uh, put some zip ties and band-aids and call it a day. Well, all of a sudden you took this little tiny battery, hybrid battery, that was that used to be underneath the back seat, and you replaced it with something that weighs four times more. This is just for reference. It probably, I don't know how much exactly it weighs, they don't publish this information. But it's very heavy and it's very big. So you can't just all of a sudden put all that weight in the back of the car and hope for the best. Same thing with the RAV4 Prime. You kind of have to uh, do some modifications for this to work and not have a car that drives like this because now you have an enormous thing in the back. So in the case of the Prius Prime, they had to put the battery in the one place that we uh, wished they wouldn't put it there, in the storage area in the back. They basically took the entire storage area because you couldn't put it underneath the seat. They couldn't really put it under the car. This is a very low car to the ground and they had to make a lot of adjustments. When you put this enormous battery in the back, the back of the car becomes way too heavy. They needed to make a lot of weight reductions to make this possible. And one of those weight reductions was the lack of the center seat in the back. Now, if you're not aware of this, when Prius Prime came out in 2017, up to 2020, it was a four-seater car. There was no seat in the middle in the back. We'll talk about what happens when they, when they change that in 2020. But then that was not enough because now you still have, okay, one seat is gone. We're, not, we're gonna have one less passenger in the car when it's driving, but standing around is still very heavy in the back. So the back hatch, which is normally just good old steel, they had to change it to carbon fiber. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, carbon fiber, just like this car. Who would have thought a Prius would have carbon fiber hatch? But it does, and they did that for weight. And you wouldn't believe how heavy these hatch doors on these cars are. They're very heavy when they're steel, because it's a big blob with a, with a giant glass. But that was not enough. If you've ever seen a Prius Prime, it has the world's most complicated glass, short of a, I don't know, a Lamborghini Countach maybe. It has a very weird curve on the back class that I can imagine was extremely difficult to make. And that, of course, is for aerodynamics to help everything and kind of try to compensate for that weight. And that curve in the glass to create like that tunnel in the middle does not exist in the regular gen fourth generation Prius. And they did that, again, to try to work around the weight. Now, we can talk about this battery for ages, but let me take you back there and just show you how enormous this thing and we'll continue talking about it. So this is the uh, enormous Prius Prime battery. It is enormous folks and that's why if you if you own a Prius Prime or if you're uh, 
seen one before, the load floor is so low on these is because you have this enormous thing. Of course, the covers are removed. Never try this at home. This is, uh, of course, goes without saying. But let me take you on a general tour of what's going on here. So obviously this battery has a much higher capacity than your uh, standard hybrid battery. It has to be very big. And other than that, it is essentially the same construction and the same basic operation. If, if you've seen my series on how hybrids work, we've talked about the relays and how this thing comes on. And it, things are the same in that aspect. But let me, let me talk to you generally of what's going on. You've got multiple stacks of batteries, and I'll take you on a tour inside toward the end of the video. But we have multiple lithium ion. Of course, all these batteries are lithium ion. Imagine if this was nickel metal hydride, you'd need to pull a trailer behind you just for the battery. So multiple stacks. You got the battery computer right here. You see all this. This is the brains of the operation. This is what checks everything around. There is temperature sensors all over the place. This is your main system relays. You got a separate block, one for positive, one for negative. When you turn on the car, whatever your EV mode, whatever mode you're in, the first order of business is these relays will come on, shut off. It's just going to check the wire going from here all the way to the inverter with converter assembly in the front to make sure we have no power leakage to ground or elsewhere that the wires underneath this car have not been compromised because if they are, we have big problems. It's just going to shut off and that's that. Now this hybrid battery in the Prius Prime is air-cooled. This was the early iteration. We'll talk about the Prime, RAV4 Prime one when we get to that. But this is the early iteration of it. It was air-cooled. It has two fans, two battery filters. I'll leave a video right here for you if you want. If you own one, you want to clean those filters, which are very important, by the way. This battery, in addition to it being air-cooled, and I've always been yelling for as far as my lungs allow to make sure you keep these things cold. They also have a heater. Now remember, this is a plug-in hybrid. This battery will get plugged in the wall and get charged. So batteries, they don't like heat, but they also don't like too cold. In order for this battery to charge sufficiently and remain healthy, it needs to remain within a certain parameter of temperature. Let's say you live in Chicago where I live and the temperature in the winter is very cold. You park this car outside and then you go and plug it to the wall. Well. If this battery is too cold, it's going to need to heat up to get to an ideal temperature to charge. And that ideal temperature for this Prius Prime is going to be 35 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. If the battery is below that, it's going to turn on the heater first when you plug it in. It's not going to just start charging right away. It's going to turn on the heaters, which are essentially, for lack of a better word, the best way to explain it to you is it's just like seat heaters. It's a fabric heater, sits underneath the battery, heats it up with temperature sensors all over the place. Once it gets in that range that she's happy, starts charging and the normal charging process will raise the temperature. That's normal, but it just doesn't want to start charging when it's too cold. So it's going to precondition this battery for charging. And then once it starts charging, if the temperature goes too high where it doesn't like it, it's going to turn on the fans and start cooling it. Let's take you on a small tour of this battery. You can see the stacks right here. They go all the way across. Here's this one stack. Here's another. Here you can see the separation between the two stacks. Now this is the uh, battery computer right here. This is what the brains of the operation. You notice there's orange wires. Orange wires is all uh, high voltage wires connected to these. And then you have some low voltage wires right there, the normal ones, not the orange ones. Here are the system main relays. And then here's one fan right there. And here's another fan on this side. Now you see the ducts coming in, going into the battery. They just kind of go across everything. And here's the other vent coming from the other battery. And this is the exhaust. So all this air is going to go into the battery. And once it cools everything, it's going to turn around, come back. You have a central exhaust, that white one, that goes right here. And then it comes down and exits out of the car because we want that hot air to go away from the car. So here's, uh, here's the enormous battery in all her glory. 
And what a glory it is, because these batteries are very expensive, because they're, uh, they're enormous. And there is another cool thing that you can do with the Prius Prime, is if you give the car permission, and permission is a big thing here with these cars, if you give the car permission, if it sees that, the, let's say you live in Arizona now, or far away from Chicago, and things are on the opposite end of extreme, it's too hot, and the battery turns on, the computer turns on these, these fans, and it, can, it cannot cool the battery enough. If you give it permission, it could actually turn on the AC in the cabin. Now, this is not like the RAV4 Prime, which we will talk about later. This doesn't have AC going through it, but the intake for the fans is in the cabin. If the cabin is air conditioned, so the air that's cooling the battery now is air conditioned. So that's, if you give it permission, it can use that AC, turn on the AC in the car, because it's electric, it's not gonna have to start the engine, and uses the power coming out from the outside wall that you plugged it in to turn on that AC and charge and cool this battery sufficiently and then do it. I highly encourage you to do that if you own one of these because even though it has a heater, it needs to be an ideal temperature if it's too cold, but heat kills these batteries. And there is a million protections in place where it would not charge if it's overheated, it'll cut out the charge and just not let it burn itself to death just because you want it to charge. Speaking of charge, Let's go show you the onboard charger and we'll have a little conversation about that because that is one subject that everybody is very confused about. So charging on these things from the consumer end is super simple. Open the door, take out the protector, connect your cable to the wall, plug it in, go to bed, drive it the next day. But what happens behind the scenes is a lot more complicated than just plugging it in and calling it a day. So let's get one thing clear before I get started because I have more questions about this every time I mention the word plug-in hybrid that I want to clarify this. This is a Toyota. It is not a Tesla and it'll never be a Tesla. It is not the same as a Tesla. People are lining up buying this and buying the RAV4 Prime and they are buying, I want a level two charger, or level four, level 27, F22, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference because you cannot DC charge this car. Plain and simple. Let's keep it very simple. There are two modes of charge that you can charge your plug-in hybrids. You can charge it at 120 volts or 220 volts or 240. That's it. You can have the biggest power wire and the fanciest, most expensive charger that puts the coolest, purest electricity into this car. And guess what? It'll be exactly the same charge time because this has an onboard charger. Regardless of how much power you put, you are limited by the onboard charger. This Prius Prime, for example, has a 3.3 kilowatt charger. That's it, you can't go higher than that. You can give it a little bit more voltage, it'll charge a little faster, but that's it. It ain't going anymore. Same thing with the RAV4 Prime. The SE has 3.3, the XSE, the fancy one, has a 6.6 .6 onboard charger. I just thought I'd clear this up because no matter how many level or the more expensive the charger you get that's designed for a Tesla, which is completely different, it's the same for the Prime cars. It depends on the onboard charger that you have, not on how much uh, the number next to your EV charger is. Let's go talk about how this actually works. So this is the onboard charger. This is what charges the battery. You are limited by what this, the size of this charger is. Now, no, you cannot upgrade it. It's not as simple as that because this does a lot more than just charge the, tw the high voltage battery. This mainly does two things when, you, when it's working and you have it plugged in the wall. First, it's gonna communicate with the computer and the battery and it's gonna ask it, hey man, we have voltage. Because this has two wires, it's two orange wires, they go to the plug and they go to the battery as well. It's gonna go, hey man, we have charge coming in. Are you ready? Are you too cold? Are you too hot? What's happening here? 
the computer will decide, are we going to charge? Are we not going to charge? Are we going to precondition? It's going to do all its thing. Once the battery is ready to charge, this will take your AC voltage from your outlet in the home, convert it to DC, and then charge the battery with that. And then it's also going to do is convert that AC to DC and then bring it down to 12 volts and power up the electronics. Remember, when the car is charging, the electronics of the car are on. The computers are talking. The whole operation is going on in the background. So you're not going to drain your 12 volt battery here. It's going to actually supply power from your house outlet to charge the 12 volt battery and supply power. Having said that, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention that most people are not aware of, the brick or the little box that is on the charging cable, that is not to, that is not a charger. That is just a CCID. It protects for surge and actually checks for open in the big wire going to the car. It makes just kind of like what the com computer does for the hybrid battery, checks for opens. It does the same thing. Make sure nothing is wet, nothing is broken, nothing is, is the insulation is fine. That's all it does. And by the way, did you know that on the Prius Prime, that cable has a lifespan and it's, then that little box has a little computer that counts that and actually won't charge after the Toyota's number is up to 30,000 uses. That's just the number they came up with. After that, they want you to replace that charger. Thought I'd throw this one on in case you didn't know that. And I always spoke of the charge schedule. I always told you, you're better optimize your charging schedule to your use for the car. Now, the reason for that is when you set a charging schedule, the car will actually automatically condition the battery pre in, in advance, pre-charging. So it's going to have the battery ready. It'll heat it up earlier. It'll have everything set to optimize that charging time. Not only just charge when it's two hours before you need to go and it's ready to go when you're it's actually going to cool the battery, make sure it's ready for not only charging, but for driving as well. So you have maximum efficiency out of this battery and the charge that you charged with before your departure time. Folks, I always want you to use the charge time, charge schedule whenever possible. I know sometimes it's not possible, but whenever possible, use it because there is a lot of engineering and software and things that happen that are beneficial to the battery, to your driving condition, to the efficiency, when you use the charging schedule. And by the way, before I forget, the charger is also air-cooled. It has a little fan, and you notice these two vents underneath the back seat on the Prius Prime. Those are the vents to cool that little charger. So there you have it, folks. Now we know a little bit more about the battery, what had to change in these uh, plug-in hybrids to accommodate for the enormous battery. The charging, we have established that this is not a Tesla, and it'll never be. In my opinion, it is better. But I'm just a humble old mechanic. You make your own mind about this one. In the next part of this video, we will be talking about the HVAC. First, in the Prius Prime, which in my opinion is the world's second most complicated HVAC system put in any car that I know of. If you know one that's more complicated, let me know. Just make sure it's not a Tesla. Having said that, we will also follow that up by a RAV4 Prime technical review and then the world's first most complicated HVAC system put in any car that I know of. So until those videos, folks, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.